This is Jocko Podcast number 14 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. Now, I want you to imagine yourself in the moment, the moment just prior to the battle. Now, I... I don't want you to think that because you're a soldier that this training has made you into some kind of a superhuman or maybe into a different kind of being because it hasn't. The training that you've been through hasn't changed the fact that you're a human being. All warriors are human beings. So this is you I'm talking to. And I want you to think about that time before you are going into the battle because that's the time when you can actually think. When you're waiting. When you're waiting to go. And if you're going to feel fear, this is where you feel it because you have time. The preparation is done, the planning is done, the briefing is done, the gear is prepared, and you are dressed, and you are ready to go. And now you're just waiting. Waiting for the call, or for the signal, or for the command to execute. And so you have time to think. And in fact, all you can do at that moment is think. And if you're in Iraq, maybe you're waiting to go into the Malab district of Ramadi, where there's been vicious IEDs and casualties happening every day for months on end. Or if you're in Vietnam, maybe you're in a helicopter and you're about to take part in an air assault on a known enemy stronghold. Or if you're, in, if you're in the Korean War, maybe you're hearing the whistles. The whistles signaling a coordinated attack by the Red Army. And you're just waiting. Waiting for the shooting to start. And if it's World War II, maybe you're just offshore and you're in a landing craft and the sound of explosions and gunfire in the distance on the beach where you're headed. The beach you're waiting to hit. And if it's World War I, perhaps you're waiting and you're at Tenenberg or Verdun or the Somme, but you're waiting to go over the top, out of that trench and into almost certain death. And in that moment, what do you think about? Do you think about family, friends? Do you think about your life? Do you think about death? Do you think about that girl you, you wish that you would have asked to marry? Maybe you're thinking, how did I get myself into this? Or maybe you're thinking, how do I get myself out of this? Or maybe you're just sitting there rethinking the plan and the sequence and the orders you were given. Maybe you're thinking about your friends getting killed or wounded. Maybe you're thinking about yourself getting killed or wounded. You could be thinking about so many different things. But one thing is certain. Whatever you are thinking about, whatever those thoughts are, those thoughts are clear. Those thoughts are an insight into your true nature, into your being, into your soul. And maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's the thing we miss about combat. And you know, we always hear about the adrenaline rush and the excitement and the challenge of combat. 
But what about the cleansing of the mind against a backdrop of death? It seems like there's, there's some purity that can only be revealed by the horror and the blood and the violence of impending combat. And as you think these thoughts and there's this moment when you realize that who's killing us is us. It's other people, it's other humans. And, and, and what are they thinking? Who are they? Why are they? What are they? And what am I doing here? Why, why am I here? And despite all those thoughts and all those ideas and all those questions, there's only one answer. And the politics, they disappear, and the thoughts disappear, and the fears, and the reservations, and the concern, and the ego, it all disappears. Because at that moment, that moment of truth, there's only one answer forward forward into the battle into the fray toward the smoke and the fire and the bullets and the bombs and towards death To face it all head on. And maybe, maybe that is what the real addiction of combat is. Maybe that's what we yearn for. Maybe those, those are the thoughts that fill our dreams and our nightmares to be there again in the breach. To have but one clear and resounding purpose for everything in our lives, everything in our world, everything in past, in present, in future, all of it wrapped up into that one instant to have that one singular purpose for being alive at that moment to attack. Attack with everything you have, with every ounce of commitment, with every bit of clarity and focus that you as a human being can possibly muster. Attack with your weapons and your mind and your body and attack with your very soul. And maybe that purity is what we miss, is what I miss. about combat. And so let's go back there once again. Once again to the battlefield, to World War I. Again, in my mind, the most brutal of all wars. Where tactics, and intelligence and strategy did not matter. It was attrition and death and horror rendered possible only because of the purest and almost insane level of selflessness and bravery. <laughs> 